So good afternoon, all the participants. We have gathered again uh, for the next session of today's, that is second session of today. And overall, uh, this is uh, 10th session, uh, sorry, 11th session of this FDP. So I know as this is uh, after lunch session, so uh, kindly bear with us, but uh, we have, uh, very renowned personality with us, uh, Professor Sanjeev Yadav, sir. So we welcome you, sir, on our FDP. Naman, I can't unmute myself. Uh, you are audible, sir. From I am just giving the volume. I am giving the volume from my mobile. That's why. On that another one. Acha, okay, 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 okay. Uh, one second, one second. Now you can, sir. Yeah. Now, now you are getting my voice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay, 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 okay. okay no problem. So, dear, uh, dear participants, uh, I would just like to introduce our eminent speaker for today's talk, uh, Professor Sanjeev Yadav, sir. So, Professor Sanjeev Yadav, sir, is currently working as head of the department, Electronics and Communication Engineering, Government Women Engineering College, Ajmer. Uh, he has been working at uh, Government Women Engineering College since 2012 and having more than 10 years of experience. Uh, he obtained his PhD degree in 2018 and MPank in 2010 from MNIT Jaipur. He completed his BTEC degree in 2007 from UPTU Lucknow. Uh, which is now AKTU. So he's a, a senior member of IEEE and a life member of IET. He is secretary of uh, IEEE Rajasthan subsection and secretary of IEEE Antenna and Propagation Chapter, uh, Delhi. Uh, for uh, uh, section for year 2019 and 2020. He has also served as treasurer of IEEE Rajasthan subsection in year 2019. He is the author of IEEE transaction paper in IEEE transaction in electromagnetic compatibility. He has authored more than 130 research papers in various conferences and journals. He is also the author of one research book published by an international publisher. He has delivered many invited talks in various capacities in FDPs. Uh, short term training programs, workshops, and other events. Uh, he is a reviewer of many international journals and conferences. He has guided more than 15 MTech students. He has organized many international and national conferences and other events. He has been awarded Research Fellowship Award at IIT Delhi for two consecutive years, 2017 and 2018. His area of research, uh, uh, his area of interest in research is antenna, frequency selective surfaces, and microwaves. So we welcome you, sir. Thank you, Naman. Uh, thank you, Naman, for such a nice introduction and welcoming me for this uh, your five days workshop on uh, IoT. And I would like to congratulate you, congratulate you for this uh, workshop and. Uh, for this topic you have chosen because this topic is a great interest as well as uh, of the great work which we are doing nowadays like uh, anything we now name that is coming into IoT. It is from the internet and nothing is mine everything is freely available over the internet yeah nowadays in covid one thing is there that uh, in this pandemic situation we are not traveling from one place to another but the distances are being ended by the internet by using i am sitting in rajasthan here and you are at uh, border of uh, up that is agra and i need not to travel from ajmer to agra for giving this lecture 
so the travel thing has been ended and nowadays many of the lectures are ha having this way so i am sitting at uh, my college during my college college hours i can tell you about everything whatever i know about the iot yes i am here and you people are at uh, near border of rajasthan and this is our college government women engineering college ajmer and this is the department of electronics and communication engineering i belongs to here as well as in our department we are having btech in electronics btech in internet of things btech in machine learning artificial intelligence as well as mtech in digital communication and phd in electronics and communication engineering we are having also center of excellence of antenna lab in our department that is an quick chamber measurement facilities we are having yeah now coming towards the iot everything whatever we are thinking whatever we are saying in this figure that has been covered this is a basic figure of iot means everything is connected with each other starting from the first figure that is a satellite you can see in the figure you can see the my mouse is moving is it visible to you or i should yes sir it is it is visible sir okay just i think i should yeah here now it's uh, i think more yeah here in this satellite we can see that that the satellite first thing is satellite satellite is being connected to each and everything nowadays we are talking with mobile phone that is also connected with satellite we are just uh, using the gps that is connected to the satellite so we are using the internet that is connected to satellite we are using the tv at our Home that is connected to it. Now it is everything is being connected, and new new satellites has been launched. I and also are being launched. Nowadays we are getting the in our mobile phones that when uh, the weather is going to when there is a rain, when there is a sunny medium, whatever it is, we are going getting the information through the satellites or through the internet. We can say that when the farmer is going to plow the field. how the farmer is plowing the field that can be traced through the gps we have to get, get the information through the mobile phones as well as from here we can say that the dustbin is full that information is sent uh, to that garbage truck that uh, now the dustbin is full you take you come here and take the garbage and then that is taking the information from the hospitals that the garbage can be taken from the hospitals as well as uh, Now from the coast shipyard, shipyard that the now the container has come. Now you have to take the container to the, the uh, any of the factory are there. Everything is connected to each and everything. Now the shopping mall complex, everything is connected with each other. Now in your home, uh, that uh, there some light is not there, or uh, you are when going to office and you forgot to switch off your light, you forgot to switch off your TV or AC. from sitting at the office you can switch on all those things everything is uh, becoming like uh, connected with each other all the components all the electronic devices they are going to be connected through your mobile phones you can say it now i coming for the definition of iot that is iot compromise things that have unique identities and are connected to the internet unique identity means one i talk about our home ac is unique identity telephone is an other identity fridge is another identity so all these things you are getting my voice naman yes sir you are audible sir okay 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 all these are different all these are connected with the internet the also we can say the network of physical objects all these are physical devices which are available at our home or offices or anywhere we can see and these are connected with the network 
then we have to focus on the iot in the configuration we have to control and network via internet all these things we have to connect through the internet and these are traditionally not associated with the internet like we can say that our fridge is not associated with the internet your uh, ac is not associated with the internet all these things which are not associated with the internet they can be connected through the internet example of pump utility meter car engine now this so these are connected to the sensors and those the information which are gathered from the sensors has been connected through the internet and has been shared with all the people or the persons now iot is a new revolution in the capabilities of the endpoints that are connected to the internet means it is a new revolution means now a days we are going to connect everything whatever we think that is going to be connected the scope of iot is not limited to just connecting the devices to the internet it allows to communicate and exchange data as well i am taking again the example of the fridge at your home you are keeping vegetables eggs fruits in the fridge you need not to worry that when they will end up and you have not to think okay today the eggs are over or today the milk is not there the sensors will collect the data now it is going to end it will automatically send a message to the grocery store that please send and after coming then those things the amount is deducted from your bank account all these things are going to happen by themselves similarly the data is processed and will provide us various applications towards a common user and it is a platform where all these devices are connected and they are interacting with each other they are collaborating with each other and it is exchanging the data with each other as i have said uh, tell you about that the things these are embedded with the electronics as well as for the software the sensors as well as the network connectivity it enables the objects to collect and exchange the data yeah as i have told you that there are so many things means each and everything is there which is going to be connected like the flight services they are connected to the internet thing online shopping it is connected uh, through the internet thing we are able technologies they are connected means each of smartphones vehicles home lighting home appliances music personal computer they all the uh, internet whatever we can think about the devices they are coming under the internet of things nowadays now it is going to allow the objects to be sensed automatically and controlled remotely as is across the existing network infrastructure creating opportunities for direct integration between the physical world and the computer based system and resulting in the improved efficiency accuracy and economic benefit whatever we are doing that we are doing remotely we are sitting at your office we are just working on your home devices or home appliances antenna system for iot now i am little bit moving towards my topic means uh, whatever we are doing wirelessly that is through the antennas without antennas we can't do anything wireless we are connected through mobile phone mobile phone is having antennas we are connected through gps gps is having antenna we are connected through wifi it is having antenna we are connected through bluetooth it is having the antenna all the things whichever we are think for wireless connection that is having the antenna yeah now the idea is we move to the internet of people then toward the internet of things the internet that is appears everywhere in the world and it is primarily connection between the people 
and now internet of things it is going to connect the things using the internet internet of things is connection of things using the internet and internet is connection of people all over the world through the connection that is internet now how internet of things has been evolved before internet the humans are connected to the human that is fixed and mobile telephone is there sms is there after that world wide web that is internet has arrived then people are connected become little bit smarter with the help of network and they are connected through email information entertainment and so many things like this after that becoming little bit more smarter then some platforms are there services are there like e-commerce websites are there e productivity is there after that they are becoming little bit more smarter and they are connected through the phones and applications like nowadays we are connected with the social media that is internet of people facebook youtube skype everything that is we are connected through the internet with the peoples we are now connected face to face through the social media now this is the internet of things we are we are people are getting more smarter and along with the machines now the devices objects data is connected through the internet that is machine to machines are connected and they are collaborating with each other they are communicating with each other and for that the automation acquisition payment all these things are happening and this is smarter and smarter and the data and the in the ambient context this is how the internet of thing has evolved now we can see that now a people is having so many sensors on their body like the motion sensor is there like the ecg sensors are there and everything is connected wirelessly with a device and that device is connected through the internet and though that internet is connected to the hospitals or your data drives or it is giving the information it is calculating the data how much energy you have lost how is how your heartbeat all the information has been transferring automatically to the places of their need here you can say that the petrol pump police as well as the camp complex everything is connected through the internet for that we need the antennas for the car we are having the antennas for the police vehicle we are having the antennas now what is the driving force of iot starting from the sensor technology by sensor technology without the sensor these are the starting point of iot they are collecting the data they are very small they are very cheap as well as there are so many types of sensors available in the market for each and everything you want to know the sensor for force force sensor is available you want the pressure sensor pressure sensor is available you want the humid sensor humid sensor is available you want the sensor for measuring the pollution level that is available all the sensors are available in the market as well as they are very very small you can see that this sensor is very small i will show in the next figure as well as the cheap miniature computers you can see that the size of the computer which is smaller than a coin low power connectivity all these sensors all these devices need to be connected through the internet so the power is also a necessary component so low power is also one of the main, main important thing is there low power consumption should be there capable mobile while devices now through the mobile phone you can do anything all these uh, whatever i am telling you about they are having their own applications and those apps are downloaded on your mobile phones through the play store and then you can all these things through the mobile phone everything is connected through your mobile phones power of the cloud doing that so it should be secure if it is not secure means anybody is coming and opening the switch of your switch on your ac switch on your television switch on your fridge and they are ordering something to their home all these thing if the data is not there for this we need the cloud this is one of the example of the google cloud platform 
that has been secured so that no one can enter your area initially the thief is coming to your home they are taking the belonging your belongings from you but nowadays the thief is going for your data they are stealing your data from their data they are doing something what whatever they want to do nowadays for that we need the secure platform to do all the applications because we are connected through internet and internet is having the crores of data whatever you can't imagine this data the inter is present in the data, internet but you have to secure your data from others data for that the cloud is there that has been protected by firewalls so that is security so many things are there in the platforms and for different different applications different platforms is there like uh, the google cloud platform is for cost effective it is highly scalable it is used for internet of things api big in data analytics everything you can do through these you can see the iot architecture here in the iot architecture you can see that the integrated applications means that these are some of the applications which has been integrated there all these informations then has to be sorry i am going from bottom sensing and identification sensing means all the information has to be sensed first like gps is sensing your location smart devices are sensing about whatever the data rfid is sensing about the data it is coming in coming like that sensors are taking the data all these things means it is the collecting the data sensing and identification this part is collecting the data from the user then that data need to be transferred that is transferred through the wpan internet wwan wman local area network metropolitan area network wide area network personal area network like this this data has to be transferred from one place to another after that that data need to be processed in the data center search engines smart decision security mining after that processing it is going to the application means i have taken earlier in your fridge your milk is about to end up then it is this sensor is taking the information of milk and it is sending the wirelessly information to the processing unit that milk is about to expand then this is going to send it to the market or the grocery store that the milk is about to end up so please send the milk after that that milk the person will send the milk to your home uh, then the sensor will close it down that now the milk is also here now you can do the process the things iot technologies there are so many things as i told you about the hardware is there communication technology is there protocols are there softwares are there cloud platforms are there i have most of the things i have already discussed so i will skip all these things for these things implementation we need these types of some devices that the arduino you know beaglebone black raspberry pi and intel galileo all these boards we are having for the implementation of the smart objects and these are some of the board connection which we are using how these uh, the small small things can be used then can be connected through the internet and these are some of the sensors which has been taking the information what of flow sensor core sensor leak levels electric magnetic so many things are available in the internet these four are the pillars of iot i have again discussed all these things devices thus as i told you about the sensors pulse sensor core sensor i have told you the size of these sensors very very small less than a coin accelerometer you can say only 4 mm diameter is there nowadays we can connect 100 to 1000 of things working together on a single network and after collecting the data from all these sensors 
their data has been doing the analysis how the data do what what data is used which has to be analyzed then data need to be sent one from place to another for these these technologies are needed like mobile to mobile the data can be sent through the wireless sensor network it can be sent from ip version 6 to lower uh, personal area network from bluetooth zigbee technology wifi lt all these technology needs the antennas now we are coming towards the antennas initially we are having the 2g 3g then 4g now we are coming towards the 5g the difference between the 2g and 3g is there there is very less bandwidth is there in the 2g in 3g little bit more bandwidth is there nowadays we are using the 4g in the 4g we can send large amount of data within a fraction of second if we want to download a movie within minutes we can download a movie means the large data can be processed simultaneously now in comparison to 4g and 5g you can see that the thousand times extra data can be transferred from 4g to 5g as well as from 10 times to 100 times the devices more devices can be connected five times the lower latency should be there and user data rate should be from the 10 times faster than to the 100 times as well as the power consumption is also low if your battery was working for one day here your battery life will be of 10 days now you can assume so much of data transfer and your battery life is going to be so high in our homes smart homes we can say that everything is going to be connected wirelessly you can see there we not need not to do the wiring everywhere we need not to put the lan cables everywhere everything is connected through the wireless nowadays we can see that at our home televisions are connected through the wireless your mobile phones are already connected we are having is the wifi routers at our home then we can connect the laptop mobile phones televisions all the devices through the wirelessly we need not to do the wiring of the lan connections like this now coming to the antenna why is antenna useful for the antenna as i told you so much data is required nowadays because so many devices are there to communicate thousands of devices now are there uh, are connected with a small internet and so much of data is there to communicate now for communicating the data we should need the large bandwidth for large bandwidth we need large bandwidth antennas what range is required range means what should be the distance means if your you know, wifi router is 1 meter away 2 meter away 3 meter means like this where your uh, router is situated from where the data need to be sent the distance between all these what frequency can be used like we are using 1.5 gigahertz for blue uh, for gps 2.4 for bluetooth 3.551 wlan 535.5 for wifi 2.5 for wifi all these frequencies are there which are used for the ism bands which are registered but other than we are having so many frequencies which are not registered we can use at our homes now how much power is available nowadays we are connected all the devices are electronic devices and they are connected through the power if the power consumption is so high then we are not going to connect these devices with the power if you are putting some battery there the battery life should be for at least months to years so that whatever the device we need not to replace or we need not to connect all the time to the electricity so all these are requirement for the antenna design which we are going to use as you know mobile phone we are having at least four to five antenna like first one is for gsm for which we are talking second is for gps which is for location 
डब्लू लैन वाई ब्लूटूथ एंड योर एंटीना फॉर दैट एफ एम रेडियो दिस मच एंटीना वी आर हैविंग इन अवर मोबाइल फोन now you assume that all these are working at the same time then your battery is going to be end up within hours so we have to point out all these four factors before designing the antennas for all these devices as i told you about the power uses this is very important factor for the antenna now we can see that how much power is being used by all these devices 10 nanowatt that is on the standby mode 100 nanowatt that is on the for the 32 kilohertz oscillator then 10 microwatt for the rfid tag 1 milliwatt for the fm receiver 1 watt for the gsm 100 watt for the microprocessor desktop 10 watt for the microprocessor laptop all this much the power is there and this power is can be taken by the button batteries these powers can be taken by the double a or triple a size batteries and above gsm that we need the large rechargeable batteries so for our devices which we are going to use in this wireless system in this iot the power usage is a very important factor for designing the antennas now there are some of the factors which are going to influence the designing of your antennas first thing frequency needed for communication at what frequency we should choose which should not be affected by the nearby frequencies which cannot interfere by the other signals like bluetooth wifi or whatever the signals of your mobile phone all these should not be taken because the pattern shapes are designed to match the specific frequency or bandwidth as well as it should transfer more data then the loci second thing is the location of the antenna where we are going to put these antennas because all these systems whatever it is it may be sensor it may be a mobile phone it may be a wifi it may be a car all these things are going to have the antenna then where to put these antenna if the devices small then we can put inside if the device size then we can put over the device if the device size is very big we can put on the outdoors or we are connect going to through connect the outdoors this way the location of antennas can be identified before designing it third thing is the area shape size available for the antennas you are having very very small sensors like uh, smaller than a coin then we need the antennas that should also be smaller like that only we cannot put the antenna for the one sensor like a coin the antenna should not should be big like your mobile phone so we need very small small devices for that because space issues is also there desired location of the antenna is dictated by weather and embedded or internal cable assembly can be used like in sensors we cannot have the internal assembly then the external antennas can be used all these things are there as well as the customer use conditions either it depends on the environment either we are going to the rajasthan for more than 50 degree centigrade or you are going for the northern part of the country that is going to be less than 20 degree centigrade or minus 20 or minus 50 degree centigrade at the siachen or we are going for the very humid places so all these conditions should also be carried out before designing the antennas now the classification based on all the factors which we have studied in the last few slides we have classified the antennas in four parts first is embedded antennas in the embedded antennas that are dependent on the customer's device and mounted on the pcbs like this one we can see that they are mounted on the devices itself second one is internal cabled antennas directly they are connected through the cables they are inside the device but are connected through the cables like we can say in your mobile phones this can happen third one is outdoor antennas 
that is exposed to weather like we are putting the antennas for our television at the rooftops we are having the antennas in our cars at the top of your car next one is external antennas these antennas we have seen at the, your wi-fi router we can see many of the devices uh, which are having these types of antennas outside the consumer's device we can have these antennas on your mobile phones which we can i can say that the wire we are using for the headphone that is used as an antenna for fm radio this is also an external antenna so all these classification is on the considering the location on the device how they are being located on the device and these are some of the available antennas for iot first one is embedded antennas you can see these antennas they are inside the device and mounted on the pcb means they are designed on the pcb like first uh, the deposition things are there first the metal is deposited after that uh, uh, other metal is deposited like the siot is deposited all these things are done for designing these antennas this is like a gps antenna internal cabled antenna these types of some types of antennas are used inside your mobile phones inside the customer device and coaxial cable connected to the pcb these types of antennas are being used in some of the devices which we are using at our homes these types of antennas can be used directly only the connectors are there and they are connected through the wire and these are the antenna only these are fma connectors which are connected with the antennas mm, means a uh, device like uh, a television you are having at your home that are connected your mobiles uh, your sorry laptops are having these types of antennas third one is embedded antennas sorry next is embedded antenna here they are directly simulated soldered over the pcbs again they are soldered over the yeah this type of antennas we are using in your mobile phones stamped metal it is planar inverted f antennas internal cable i have told you everything about these when there is no space on the pcb then these antennas are used they are flexible means we can just uh, hold it all these things as according to our requirement we can do this and the pcb designer more freedom this is the stamped metal antenna which are being used at the laptop if you will open your laptop you can find this type of antenna on your laptop which are used for the getting the signal there is one more classification is there for the iot antenna that is chip antenna wire antenna whip antenna and pcb antenna this is the chip antenna antenna within the size of antenna you can see that this part this is the one part of the antenna and which is connected with some of the device the best option for small form factor and for lower frequencies and it is good for large production because nowadays we are going to have very small small sensors and for smaller sensors we need small antennas for transmitting the data so chip antennas are very useful for connection of these small they need the external matching means how the power need to be transferred it may be it should also have the uh, power as well as uh, it should be matched with the sensor all these things should be there and it should also be the sensitive to the ground plane geometry because it is taking the information from and it the data which is being transferred so its geometry should also be sensitive now the wire antennas 
as you can see this pcb the wire antennas are being connected these are best optimized designed through em solvers we are not going to design this antennas directly we are designing the antennas and we simulate these antennas along with your pcbs so that they can put connected through the pcbs and they are very cost effective so that these antennas cannot increase the cost of your particular devices vip antenna this type of antenna we are going to use over the cars nowadays you have seen these some type of this type of antennas over the cars they are the most costliest antenna and this would be of highest performance and ideal when iot module faces co site issues due to multiple transceivers they need connectors on the board of the module means they are directly connected they need coaxial cable from pcb to antenna module means from the internal to the antenna module they are being connected through the wires this antenna type requires emission testing to be performed why because car is also made up of metal and the metal behaves like the antenna so there should be no interference with the signal of the car along with the, the antenna of the which are being used so we have to go for the emission testing like emi emc electromagnetic compatibility and electromagnetic interference testing should be done for the car before using these antennas and along with these antennas these are the pcb antennas they are the antennas are designed within the pcb and it is the lowest in cost and flexible in design these antennas are designed by individuals companies and based on the applications these pcbs are used for particular purpose and for each purpose a separate pcb are designed in bulk so used for specific frequencies like we are going to use antennas for your mobile phones then only those antennas are used for mobile phones if you are going to use antennas for your televisions then their antennas would be designed for the television if you are going to use the antenna for your ac then the chip is designed for the ac so specific requirement antennas and they are produced in bulk of the same properties having the same properties they should have the small light weight and can be easily mounted because of the specific things they need to be mounted easily and the quality should be high and the cost should be very large the 10000 times more calls and data traffic than at 3g or 4g so the mobile broadband we are going to have the last fast speed critical communication massive internet of things and forward compatibility here each of your device is directly connected to the internet for that the 5g antennas are needed for the 5g antenna we are need the very large spectrum and the license spectrum we can see there we are going from 500 to 2000 megahertz here we are going for 1g that is 1g 2g 3g here here we are having the 5g and here we are having the 5g different different bands according to the countries has been defined for the wireless industry in the 5g like one is the sub 1 gigahertz band that is ideal coverage band and could be provided very useful means for extending a superior 5g it could not support extremely wide bandwidth and therefore enables the fastest possible data rate it is going to reach more people in both developed and especially developing 
is going to be similarly in the 1 to 6 gigahertz we are going to have 1 to 2.6 gigahertz and 5g technology is ready to deploy from 2.6 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz so these bands offer a mixture of coverage and capacity above 6 gigahertz uh, we are going towards the higher frequency range and higher frequency we are going to have very small small antennas and the 5g are limited to small urban areas inside the buildings radio propagation qualities and small cell sizes will be needed for the higher frequency as the frequency is inversely proportional to the your lambda that is the wavelength for the 5g the normal antenna would not be effective then we need to have the MIMO antenna these are some of the examples of the MIMO antennas which we are going to have for the 5G. These Wi-Fi routers you have already seen. These types of devices have been now, the work has been started as well as ex extensive work is being going on at all over the world. And you can see that these are the routers, inside the routers, these types of devices, these types of antennas and embedded there. And so the cover they are installed easy to install at any place now you can see that in the top these are the anti three antennas are there here the three antennas here this is one portable device which is having so much of the MIMO antennas inside the device which is giving the better connectivity everywhere you have one of the example of the 5g antennas or the MIMO antenna or we can say that the iot antenna here each and everything is connected with any other thing here this is the mobile tower that is giving power or that is giving signals to this building this building this building and this building and then they are having their own network like this one then this network is giving signals to the complete building similarly here it is giving network to the all the surrounding people this is having their internal network that is going to give the network to the surrounding people and this is going to give the network to the surrounding people and they are connected to the wi-fi routers you can see here in each and every floor the wi-fi routers this way the 5g means multiple input multiple output and MIMO antennas are being used from one to other and other to other similar everyone is having the capacity is being increased as well as the bandwidth is going to be increased this way now you can see each and every device is being here the car bus mobile laptops everything is being connected the buildings hospitals airport all the things are being connected through the internet of things using the MIMO antenna. This is one more example of the MIMO antennas. Here, RF antennas, they are giving particular signals for each and every mobile phones. Means, in the 5G, each and every device will have their different pencil beams. Means, initially, we are having the beams like uh, it is having a complete band for two I, as far we are i am taking the example from 2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz they are having the bluetooth band which is 2.45 gigahertz from there each and every device will be connected but in the 5g antennas each and every device will have their different different band And this is which has been allotted by the FCC for different different countries. The different frequencies has been allotted 
and the work has been also going on throughout the world over these frequencies. In case of the US, you can say that the 600 megahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, 3.5 gigahertz, 5.9 gigahertz, all these frequencies are been working. For different different countries, the different bands, someone working on the below 3 gigahertz, below 4 gigahertz, in the 5 gigahertz range, and at the higher range, that is from the 24 to 28 gigahertz, then 37 to 40 gigahertz, and at a very high band that is 64 to 71 gigahertz means these blue are the licensed band which we are using as well and the green part they are the unlicensed band and these are the existing band to this which we are using for the LTE box that is 4G 4G communication we are using these band and these bands are being used for the 5G, you can see there. Nowadays, each and every country is having their different different bands for the frequency allocation. Here in this, there are some of the things are there for sub one gigahertz, which is less than one gigahertz. As I shown you in the previous figure, this is less than one gigahertz band. Here, for the moderate channel capacity, it is still having the low speed and deep indoor coverage and fine air is 700 megahertz. Then for sub 6 gigahertz, the large channel capacity is there, high speed is there, wide coverage area network. And fine air is 3.5 gigahertz, so mainly it is being used. And for the millimeter wave that is greater than 6 gigahertz, there are so many bands are there, that is fine air 26, 28, gigahertz and it will have the limited area coverage because frequency is again inversely proportional to lambda and lambda is the wavelength so as the frequency increases the wavelength decreases so the limited area network will be there here the frequency is low so the wide wide area network is there and there these bands are some of the names has been given and 51 and 50 and 41 and 38 and for these the ranges are there and the, for these some of the countries are there and in our country we are going to use N78 band which is from 3.3 .3 to 3.8 gigahertz and it is going to use the time division multiplexing which is time division duplexing they are going to use this is the current status of this 5g In all over the world, we can see that these are the purple dots. We can see these are the places where 5G is working. Currently, it has been commercially deployed. We can see at the USA part, some of the part of the USA are being used. Some part of China is using. And here, some part of the, some of the countries are already using the 5G. And the all these things are going This India is at the end. Most of the world is green means they are still using GSM, 3G and 4G. They are the research work has also not been started for the 5G. And without these type of networks, the IoT is little bit difficult to employ because all the devices should be connected through the inter internet and for the connection to the internet, large data is needed for transferring the large data we need good bandwidth antennas as well as good bandwidth internet facilities now we move towards the application of these antennas on the iot yeah this is the home automation that is the intelligent home in the intelligent home you can see there all Thing, everything is being controlled by the 
lights speakers window shades laptop tv tablet exterior lighting garage door speakers wifi router refrigerator irrigation system all these devices you can control these devices like one such example is the smart actuary this is the smart actuary which is put inside your refrigerator then the act monitor synchronize with your smartphone to tell you how many acts you have got at home and when they are going bad every information is there all these things is having a sensor and this sensor is collecting the information about that how many days which is the expiry date when they are going to expire like this these two are going to be expire and this will be picked up next all this information and how much are empty then there is one antenna which is going to send the information to your laptop or to your mobile to the app that this much is the information and now you need to order or it will self order for to the market this is one example of iot next one is smart washing machine again the your washing machine should be there that is the information how to operate what is the uses what is the statistics all these things are there smart equities is the first indest company washing machine designed to be integrated in smart ecosystem covering a wide range of use cases there are so many cases are there now the now you need to start the now you need to open the tap you need to close the machine you need to start the dryer all the things has been controlled by the mobile phone using the antennas and the applications antenna will send the information to the internet and to the internet that information will be come to your handset at your home sitting at any of the places you can change just whatever the light you can choose according to the match the moment or recreate any color from the photo like this or you can switch off the light from only using your mobile phones this is a smart lighting system which can be connected through the iot next is the smart ac it is learned from your budget location schedule and usage to automatically maintain the perfect temperature and maximize savings for your home it will checks up at what time what you for doing it for degree centigrade the time auto see it will always maintain the 24 degree but this system is work when you are going to on the ac when you are going to off the ac when you are going to increase the temperature decrease the temperature it will monitor everything and later on it will adjust itself to that and it will automatically do what you have done in the previous stages A smart sleep system first it will visualize your sleep cycle understands what you wakes up and compare nights from the palm of your hand and you can control your personalized wake up and fall or sleep programs all these things are done automatically you need not to do anything through the iot smart weather station 
this weather station allows you to use indoor temperature relative humidity and co2 readings to live in a healthier process it will automatically changes the incoming and outgoing air through the sensors how much uh, which uh, gas is inside uh, which uh, how the temperature it's humid or cold or hot according to this it switch on the ac switch off the ac all things are done through the smart it will monitor itself everything A smart slow cooker again you can monitor the working of the cooker through your mobile phone whenever you are at your office you can start working through the cooker you can cook your food through the cooker whenever you are office or you are coming back home from the office so that your time will be saved you can operate it through your mobile phone only smart garbage cans this is also very good things it will alert to the nearby garbage truck that i am full please empty me it will send the signals after it is become being filled it will send the signals to the garbage truck and the garbage truck will come and empty it again for the reuse smart gardening a smart gardening here the bit onix give data on the plants and conditions surrounding them for fall. again here we will put the sensor how much water is needed how much air is needed which things is needed how much what to do now all the information has been collected as you say you can see here the device is connected to this from this device it will display now you need to the time to give the water or time to give the urea or time to give the um, manure or time to give the um, put it in the sun all these things are automatically monitored by the smart garden so you need to put the sensors in the soil the more it will check the moisture of the soil everything it being done through the internet of things and then automatically it will send the data to your mobile phone so that you can do that thing now we can see that internet of things is everywhere wherever we go we'll get the internet of things for the vehicle asset person pet monitoring controlling here everywhere we are having the internet of in the agriculture automation in the energy consumption security surveillance building management everyday things we are connected for a smarter tomorrow for telemedicine and healthcare for smart homes and cities then for everyday things we are having the internet of things whatever we think now that is going to be in the internet of things and they are connected wirelessly now we come to the some real time applications which are being used yeah this is the efficient waste management smart city system supported by sensor sensing as a service again the similar thing is there this is a cloud which has been connected wirelessly from all the things from the city council to the recycling plant manufacturing plant health and safety authorities to the city where the infrastructure is there for the people are living as well as the garbage cans garbage trucks everyone is connected through the internet and through the wifi mode and that is due to the these antennas so what is going to happening these garbage cans they are giving the signals means they are again the wifi signals is every there you can check there the wifi signal is there means they are wifi connected when they are full they are giving information 
to the any nearby Wi-Fi. Then this Wi-Fi is sending the signals to the server. And server is checking. Means it is going to collect the data. After collecting the data, it will analyze it and it will check where to send the information, either to the city council or to the recycling plant or to the manufacturing plant or to the health and safety authorities. Then from where like it is going to city council, then the city council will inform the garbage truck that the garbage truck on that locality, that dustbin is being pulled, that the garbage can is full. So go and collect the data. So it will go to the garbage can and or to the garbage trucks. There, this will data will be collected or this garbage will be connected and it is going to the recycle plant. Similarly, they can also send the information to these and which type of garbage is there so that it can be gone to the manufacturing or it is going to the recycling or it is going to the council or it is going to the health and safety authorities. It depends so that the data can be collected and sent to their respective places. This is another scenario for IoT application. As here you can see that nowadays we are going to the shopping mall. In the shopping mall, each and every device is having a tag on. That is the RFID tag. RFID tag is similar to the antenna. It is also one bifurcation of the antenna. We can say that because it is radiating. If sometimes the people at the counter forgot to remove the tag, when you are coming out that the grocery store or it gives the signal to that the tag is not So the antennas are being used at the and each are going to tell you about themselves. As those person enters the store, they are moving with the items. The items will self tell them that I have been new in this store. My expiry date is this one. You can take this one. And in your refrigerator, this item is not there. So you need to purchase this item. Everything is there. All this information will be gathered everywhere and you have to take off. Everything will be dispatched to your place. When the shopping in the market, the goods will introduce themselves. When moving the, the goods, the reader will tell you the staff to put a new one. And when paying the goods, the microchip of the credit card will communicate with the checkout reader. Means you need not to go for the billing. All the things will be done automatically. You are having in your basket the things, then they will calculate their amount and they will the automatically the amount will be detected from your credit card or debit card, whatever it is. As you can see in this figure. And everything is because of the antenna and wireless thing. Next thing, smart parking. In this smart parking things, there is a US 41 billion that is provided by the visibility to the availability of the parking space across the country. Here in the smart parking, now the parking is a very, very big problem throughout the world. Now we are you know, just taking one car, two car, three cars, and the spaces are not available in the parking. So now a smart parking will tell you that at this place, there is a parking space is available so you can go there and park the vehicle. So yeah, through the internet, everything is connected through the internet and it will check out where your car can be parked to the nearby place and it will check and it will introduce you on the demand. IoT on roads. As you can say, there are so many accidents.
you can check all these things as in the first figure that you are using that the people are changing the lanes and in the film, second figure there are the accidents is there in the third figure the car accident is there in the fourth figure you can see how without the traffic light the people are moving and in the last one the people are just moving there so as per the statics of the u.s crash in 2011 5 million crashes has been done and the 2 million injuries has been done and the for the, and the people have lost their lives in the injuries and the property has been damaged they have lost the productivity and the healthcare and emergency emergency services are there for these things we need to have the iot but if the people are doing some silly mistakes that cannot be controlled by the iot like for the full so you the next slide can save the idiots if you are just talking and doing on work on your mobile phones and you're driving no one is going to save you and in the next way how the driver is driving this way no one is going to save you so no technology can be save idiots for these types of driving we are having the automatic connected vehicles for this we can say that the v2x technology each car will having so many devices are there gps is there wheel encoder is there onboard units, ultrasonic sensors radar camera data and all the information is sent through these devices these antennas example is v2x that is vehicle to everything it is a wireless technology that allows vehicles to communicate with each other, each vehicles and their surroundings. Like this technology is going to connect it with the infrastructure like the road light. They are going to connect it with the nearby mobile phones, nearby pedestrians, nearby vehicles and smartphones. Like this one. In these figures, you can see that each and every car is being connected to nearby vehicles so that they can reduce the number of accidents which we have shown in the previous slide when they are moving nearby they will apply the car will you know, self apply the brake they will tell or that they someone is coming nearby or some accident has been on there so you can change the routes Technologies are being incorporated in the V2X technologies. All the vehicles are communicating with vehicle or roadside object that is must use V2X. If it is about to come, so please stop your car. The signal is going to be red, so slow down your speed. All these things are going to happen in the V2X technologies. And from, from here, I'm going to summarize about that through a tech analyst company that has predicted 41.6 billion connected IoT devices by 2025. Means this much devices are going to be connected by 2025. Now you can assume how much devices would be there, how much sensors are needed. It is also suggested industrial and automotive equipment represents the largest opportunity to get connected of the things, but it also sees strong adoptions of smart home and wearable devices in near term. So in future, we are going to use a smartphone and wearable devices. Now, this is the current status. We can see in 2003, the world population is about 6.3 billion and the devices of 500 million. But here you can see that in 2010, the world population is 6.8 billion 
the devices which are connected through the internet that are 12.5 billion means per human is connected with 1.84 devices in 2015 per human being is connected with 3.47 devices the world population increased to 7.2 billion and the devices increased to 25 billion and 2020 which we are now each and every person is connected to 6.58 devices which is 50 billion now you can assume how much devices how many devices are being connected wirelessly so the need of the antennas you can think what is the market of antenna and what is the capacity we are going to use utilize means 50 billion so we need the 50 billion antennas for these devices as well as we are moving towards 2021 2022 this data is going to be higher and higher high the future of iot everything is going to be connected through the internet what happens when 50 billion machines become connected means this is everything will become connected through the cloud the real time network planning should be there through the internet safe and visibility hospital optimization everything as i have shown you in the first slide you remember there everything is being connected to the this is going to be happen the future of iot everything whatever we think it is going to be through the iot and for that we need the antennas there are so many types of antennas are needed very small to very big antennas we need for connection of these devices the sky is not the limit it's only the beginning with the iot have autism virtualized analytics become predictive employees increases productivity machines are self healing and automated monitoring and maintenance is mobilized so everything is going to be automated the factory will become brilliant the brilliant power will be there brilliant hospital will be there brilliant rail yard should be there this is going to be the future of iot you name the device and you will have it on the iot whatever we are going to think that we can incorporate in the iot in the wireless world by the use of the and now some that iot only tip of an iceberg till now we are here only we have to explore this much of the things means we have reached only to the tip only i would like to stop here and for the queries if any queries are there please let me know so if there is any query uh, related to such topic so one can ask or one can write in the chat box also uh i do one thing i allow you to uh, unmute yourself so if one want to ask anything so one can go ahead or else you can ask me later on also i will definitely forward your query to sir so sir if there will be any query later on then i will forward it to you no sure sure so thank you very much sir for giving your uh, lecture on uh, uh, importance of iot you have very well explained the importance of industry uh, internet of things and the importance of uh, antenna in the field of iot so definitely uh, all the participant will get an idea Uh, to uh, work in the field of uh, antenna design to uh, incorporate that into the internet internet of things so thank you very much sir thank you very much for your kind lecture thank you very much sir so you are not audible i think
there is some problem. Okay. Anyway, so thank you very much, sir. Uh, you can you can uh, you can disconnect. So thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So dear participants, we are now moving towards the last session of today's. Uh, so uh, uh, kindly, I request you all to uh, bear with me to uh, allow me to give your uh, last session of today's. That is. Uh, uh, fourth day of this FDP and the last session for fourth day and tomorrow will be the final day of our FDP. So uh, let's start with So uh, this session will be taken by myself only. So I would like to introduce myself by me only. So myself Namangar, and I'm working as assistant professor in Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Institute of Engineering Technology, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar University, Agra. So uh, the topic which I will cover is the industrial Internet of Things. So I hope you will get an idea about how this industrial Internet of Things will work. So, so let's start with. So, <clears throat> now firstly, I will uh, make my camera disabled so that there will be no bandwidth problem. So uh, to start with, uh, industrial Internet of Things has differences with the existing Internet of Things, the popular Internet of Things. So industrial Internet of Things has a different scope and there are some specific uh, uh, specificities uh, that are there in industrial Internet of Things. So we are going to understand uh, in this uh, session. So what uh, industrial internet of things uh, how it differs from the regular internet of things and how industrial internet of things solutions are useful to real life industrial problems so uh, uh, we start with this quote by uh, paul Hogarth, and what he said is that uh, iot as a concept has uh, crossed the uh, chasm for slideware to reality with many industries implementing in uh, internet of things solutions so basically uh, as you know what it means is that internet of things uh, uh, is uh, no longer confined to theory and as you know a height based on notion uh, it is no longer like uh, uh, like that so it is being used in reality in industries uh, different IoT solutions are being implemented in the industry uh, for solving different industrial problems to make industrial processes uh, manufacturing processes uh, much more efficient than the way it is present. So, so let us try to understand industrial Internet of Things. Uh, uh, as we have already understood, uh, uh, as we have gone uh, through all of the sessions in the previous, uh, uh, the main aim of IoT is to interconnect different things. And these things are uh, different objects on the smart objects. So what is required is to globally connect these smart objects or the things so that uh, the objects are uniquely identified and they are able to interoperate between themselves. So. It is an IoT and an IoT solution. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, different objects, uh, which are smart objects, where there is intelligence, there are embedded in the different things. So there are embedded systems that are attached to the different things, uh, the worldly things, and these things, uh, 
they have their abstraction as a smart objects they are able to interconnect with each other they are able to internetwork with each other and so on so in the contrast uh, in industrial internet of things we are focusing on industries particularly focusing on industrial systems industrial automation enterprise uh, system enterprise uh, planning product life cycle and so on and while while we do it we basically digress from the uh, core requirements of iot and there are some specific requirements which concern uh, industrial processes that come into the picture so we are going to understand what these are in this uh, in this session so before that in terms of the scope of uh, industrial iot Uh, basically it borrows some of the features of the existing iot plus it borrows some features from the vision of industry 4.0 so industry 4.0 basically gives a framework for automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies so it is a vision it is a way forward that has been proposed so industry 4.0 uh basically tries to improve the automation and data exchange in manufacturing technologies it tries to incorporate concepts from uh, cyber physical systems uh, iot cloud computing and so on so what we have essentially is that uh, what is well known as the smart factory so uh, industrial iot basically uh, takes some features from the regular iot that is the conventional iot and some from the industry 4.0 and uh, tries to have a separate vision separate technology for itself so what we have we have already understood that uh, whereas industrial iot combines features from iot and industry 4.0 it is not iot as such we have to understand this thing first okay so there are certain features that have been borrowed from iot but is it is not the iot so this industrial iot and iot are not the one and the same they are not uh, whereas iot focuses uh, more on the consumer level services or consumer level products and so on uh, on the other end uh, industrial iot basically has the focus on the enterprise so the scope for iot is consumer level whereas the scope for industrial iot is enterprise level okay so uh things such as uh, concepts and technologies methodologies such as uh, machine learning big data technology m to m machine to machine communication uh automation these are some of the integral components for building industrial iot so machine learning i think we all understand machine learning is very very popular it is a part of artificial intelligence Uh, it is a kind of artificial intelligence so which basically now uh, learns as uh, you may be aware about about that so learning from the past and there are different things uh, so there are different aspects of machine learning so learning from the data the existing data and trying to make things uh, uh, <coughs> trying to make things predictive and trying to have things which are better in the future so machine learning techniques and technologies are used big data okay so in uh, 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 the big data uh, that is how to handle this big data what are the tools that are available so it is a, a different topic of discussion so uh, what is the topic of uh, Uh, uh data handling and data analytic analytics so uh, then machine to machine interaction machine to machine communication is about uh, two machines directly talking to each other uh, directly communicating with each other okay so getting a, a particular work or a task accomplished without any human intervention uh, without any human intervention so for example a robotic arm opening the door of a refrigerator and then performing certain other task in the refrigerator so uh that is an uh, example of machine to machine so maybe the robotic arm goes 
and open the door of the refrigerator checks whether there is sufficient milk in the milk pot of the refrigerator as uh, sir has also taken this example already so or not uh, there is uh, no if there is no sufficient milk then the system as a whole will send uh, the milk pot uh, or the refrigerator will send an sms to the milk person so uh, what is happening in the entire process there is no human intervention so we have machine uh, communicating with machine uh, another machine communicating with another machine and so on we have machine to machine communication without any human intervention so going back we have machine to machine communication and automation so these are the different features different aspects of industrial iot so industrial iot is supported by huge amount of data collected from sensors it is based on wrap and reuse approach rather than rip and replace approach so what is mean by these terms uh, is uh, when we talk about industrial iot we are talking about building a new system from scratch we are talking about using the existing uh, manufacturing systems existing industrial systems okay we have to just wrap them with sensors actuators and so on okay and make things efficient so we are trying to reengineer the existing systems and the processes and we are not building anything brand new from scratch so this is what we have to remember when we discuss industrial internet of things so let us try to understand the revolution of industrial internet of things so the first industrial revolution happened with the mechanized production uh, then came uh, fast production which is the second industrial revolution in the third industrial revolution internet and automation was featured in manufacturing and at present what we have is the fourth industrial revolution which incorporates industrial iot so this industrial iot is featured as part of the fourth industrial revolution so we we'll look at this particular figure uh, what we have starting from uh, 1700 when there was power generation and mechanical automation then came the 1800s industrialization then in 1900s we had this uh, electronic automation and at present we have a smart automation and this is what this uh, how the industry 4.0 evolved today so in industry 4.0 we have smart factories and so on in the industrial sector so when we talk about industrial iot it is about fourth generation of industrial automation that means industry 4.0 clubbed with the uh, you can say second generation of industrial revolution so internet at present uh, so the first generation of internet is the internet that we will use uh, the regular internet with uh, connects different computers throughout the world uh, so this is the first generation of the internet second generation of the internet is about connecting different things connecting different machines and so on so this uh, uh, industrial iot basically combines the second generation of internet and fourth generation of industrial automation and cloud computing so cloud has become very popular technology since about uh, more than half a decade or so uh, cloud has become very popular it is being used in the industrial sector as well so what happens is cloud basically offers computational environments computational infrastructure computational platforms computational softwares in addition to regular storage so cloud is like a huge data storage which can store a lot of data and all these things huge uh, uh, huge data storage coupled with infrastructure software platform hardware and so on so everything uh, everything one can get access uh, to uh, to in an industry without basically having to purchase this of their own right so cloud computing is very popularly used uh, not only in the other space of uh, everyday life but also in the industry as well so in uh, industrial iot uh, network we have physical objects that are interconnected we have different systems subsystems that are interconnected there are different platforms type of platforms that work together different applications and so on so these networks are industrial iot networks 
that can communicate with one another uh, the external environment they communicate with the uh, external environment and different people so uh, people are also is uh, a part of these industrial iot networks so there are different peoples the different end users stakeholders everybody at the enterprise level uh, everything that is there they all uh, form a uh, part of industrial iot they have to be inter network of course so they have to be connected these things uh, the things people processes okay everything connected together so the acquisition of industrial iot has led to availability and affordability of sensors processors and other technologies which facilitate capture and access to real time information so all these uh, industrial iot devices and wherever they are deployed through sensors sensor have become affordable they are readily available nowadays the different processes other computers other computing devices technologies and so on so they capture a lot of data they offer the data in real time for further analysis making things much more efficient from the data that is collected so moving ahead uh, industrial iot for building uh, uh, industrial iot there are four broad requirements uh, we need the hardware and software connectivity we need a cloud platform okay uh, as we have discussed already about the necessity of cloud in the industrial sector and how cloud can help with respect to processing uh, infrastructure data storage and so on so application development and big data analytics uh, big data analytics is very important uh, all these different sensors in the industrial uh, uh, sensors and actuators that are fitted to these uh, different machines manufacturing equipments and so on so they throw in a lot of data they throw in lot of uh, Uh, data that is very important, that is very crucial. So it can reveal a lot of information, and that by uh, then by mining that data, one can predict different things in order to make uh, these industrial processes much more efficient. So different other views of industrial IoT requirements. One is access, access with respect to any time, anywhere, uh, anything, connectivity, and uh, anything connectivity is very important it is a third dimension that has been added to any time and anywhere which uh, uh, which was a pervasive which was the vision of uh, pervasive communication pervasive systems so access uh, one can have access anything that can be access at any time from anywhere in industrial iot end to end security is important and that is only important for industrial iot Uh, not only for industrial iot but also for uh, iot based system uh, also so in fact for any computer based system the uh, system security is important so user experience is also very crucial so ultimately it is all about offering services to the users different stakeholders so user experience has to be taken into account as one of the fundamental requirements for building industrial iot so what the user exactly want how their uh, problems can be addressed how it can be solved the problems and how through the use of the system that is being developed the industrial iot system okay so the user can do things better and how their experience as a whole can be improved so then we have a uh, transition to smart machines so machines by uh, adding sensors actuators etc we are making the machine smart we are making the, uh, the asset the asset management is very important uh, though asset management you know uh, uh, through these uh, different sensors actuators the assets can be managed the industrial assets that can be managed in a much much more efficient way so how the assets can be managed this is one of the requirement that have to be considered for building industrial iot so then big data and cloud are very important cloud offers storage computational efficiency and so on so without basically having one uh, one to procure or by uh, procure and deploy this uh, computational infrastructure at their own workplace or industrial uh, 
uh, in the industry and uh, big data so uh, all these sensor actuators uh, each and everything that we have talked about so the at the enterprise level uh, the people process things uh, systems and so on so they are going to throw in a lot of data these uh, data are going to be sent uh, quite the data are going to be sent in real time and they have characteristics they are not only big in volume they have uh, uh, they have come in huge velocities and uh, there are different type of uh, data, uh, test data speech data uh, multimedia data uh, and any other type of data like images video etc all of which is coming at the same time so it has to be handled and so on so this is what we are going uh, to discuss so when we talk about how to handle uh, data handling and how to analyze the data that is received so what uh, uh, what is required is to have a virtualized version uh, of a physical plant so through industrial iot systems what we are trying to build is a virtualized plant corresponding to a physical industrial plant so these physical plant and the different machines in the plant are fitted with different sensors which throw in lot of data and sensor readings and from these virtualized plant lot of different type of instruction can be sent to the physical plant and the embedded systems that that are attached to these machines uh, to these in instructions can help to maneuver uh, to perform different operations on these machines so these are uh, dif uh, different design considerations for building industrial iot to use an iot device for industrial applications these design objectives have to be considered energy is uh, paramount energy with respect to the time for which the iot device can operate with limited power supply so we have limited power supply and we want to extend the lifetime of the iot device so that is installed and that is fitted with an industrial machine so latency is very crucial it corresponds uh, to the time that is required to transmit the data uh, the latency uh, it has to be minimized because uh, uh, let us say that we are talking about sensors that are fitted to a welding machine so uh, if the latency is not very minimum then what is going to happen by the time the instruction reaches the machine or uh, the data is uh, sent to the operator or from the operator to the machine what happens is the welding machine might have performed more welding so even in a fraction of a second so it, it may have done so more uh, part will get welded which is not required so precision with respect to the time is very crucial and when you talk about the uh, latency of the operations so latency is the in the transmission of the data is very crucial latency has to be minimized to the extent which is possible uh throughput is quite understandable we need maximum data to be transmitted across the industrial iot network scalability likewise is very understandable we are talking about not just one or two machines but large number of machines in the industrial iot sphere topology how these different uh, uh, how these are different because ultimately what is going to happen is Uh, these sensors and these communication devices they have they are going to be inter network so what we are going to have is a network topology and uh, uh, <coughs> there are uh, different uh, devices and different specifications as per the topology available and they have been manufactured individually by different vendors so interoperability is very important not only that interoperability is important but how these devices from the network uh, is very crucial as well so the overall network topology form out the devices and how these devices interoperate with one another is uh, something that has to be taken as one of the important primary design consideration in building industrial iot so safety and security likewise uh, Uh, there is no need to elaborate further but uh, very important issues that also have to be taken into consider consideration uh, so 
we need to understand this thing properly when we are talking about automation as a whole in the industry it should not happen so things have to be very reliable the systems have to be very reliable it should not happen that the sensor is giving a wrong reading because of uh, which a crankshaft or you know, some of uh, fuel uh, goes through uh, causing accident to the people who are working in the plant okay so industrial safety is very important so industrial iot system automation uh, which offer automation they have to be very much reliable they have to uh, take into the account the degree of safety and the security of the application as well so going back uh, trying to understand industrial iot uh, which is a, a part of iot so whereas uh, iot traditionally focuses on the convenience of the individuals uh, industrial iot focuses on the efficiency safety and security of operation so in terms of the machine to machine communication and uh, um, uh, um, uh, IoT definitely definitely uses uh, M2M communication, but it is not uh, very exclusive uh, to the use of uh, IoT machine to machine communication. Uh, uh, the in 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 IoT that is uh, limited. So whereas industrial IoT extensively uses uh, this M2M communication. Okay, uh, it is extensively used in industrial IoT. the whole industrial operation in a plant is automated so one machine talking to another machine second machine talking to third and to fourth and so on so this is quite extensive it is quite present in the industrial sector industrial uh, that is industrial iot so industrial iot heavily depends on m2 communication so whereas this uh, traditional iot focuses on applications at the consumer level and on the other hand industrial iot basically focuses on application at the industrial level and at the enterprise level so let us look at one more aspect so here m2m when we talk about uh, uh, m2m so m2m and uh, iot so m2m focuses on device to device communication there is an emphasis on uh, communication between devices uh, between machines and iot on the other end uh, iot uh, focuses on the overall system integration of the system components sub components uh, sub system integration uh, that is a, one of the important features of iot so this is what we need to understand so m2m versus iot uh, m2m focus on uh, uh, device अभी लेक्चर चल रहा है आधे घंटे में आऊंगा आपको ठीक है द गेट विल सो सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू सो M2M फोकस ऑन डिवाइस ऑफ कोर्स बोथ ऑफ M2M एंड IoT दे हैव फोकस ऑन अदर एस्पेक्ट्स लाइक नेटवर्क कनेक्टिविटी सर्वर इनेबलमेंट एप्लीकेशंस एंड डेटा दीस आर देयर फॉर बोथ M2M एंड IoT whereas m2m focuses on uh, particularly on devices so iot basically focuses more on the system level integration so now service management in industrial iot is very important it is all about uh, why do you want industrial iot we, we want to offer improved services so service management is very crucial so service management basically uh, Uh, what it is referring to is the implementation and management of the quality of service which meets the end user demand and end user demands are met and increasing the overall quality of service so service is basically a collection of data and the associate associated behaviors to accomplish a particular function or feature of a device or portions of a device so through industrial iot uh, solutions the overall services the management of the different services have to be improved so so uh, as we can see uh, 
briefly over here services can be of two types one is the primary service and the other one is the secondary service so primary service are basic services uh, that are auxiliary services uh, auxiliary functions which provide services to the primary service or secondary service uh, that are terms add uh, secondary service okay so what we have primary service are basics uh, uh they are very important so you need those services whereas secondary services are or auxiliary services which may or may not be there okay so <clears throat> so after these uh, basics of industrial iot uh, uh how uh, this industrial iot differs uh in uh, uh principle from regular iot so what is the difference between iot and m2m and having uh, understanding of all of these different basic concepts so uh, <clears throat> now uh, we see the specific applications of industrial iot in the industrial sector so some of the key application areas of industrial iot are manufacturing industry healthcare industry transportation and logistics mining and firefighting so in terms of manufacturing uh, in a manufacturing industry there are a lot of manufacturing devices that are equipments workforce uh, supply chain uh, work platform or different work platforms are there so these have to be integrated and connected to achieve smart production so they have to be internet work so we have different uh, manufacturing machines manufacturing devices uh, equipments workforce then the entire supply chain uh, uh, manufacturing uh, supply chain from production to the end users uh, the entire supply chain and then the work platform also so all of these have to be integrated and connected to improve the production uh, that is overall industrial production so these have to be done in order to uh, reduce the operational cost improve the productivity of the worker reduce injuries at the workplace so this is very important actually so safety applications of industrial iot are very important these are very uh, interesting and these are very popular safety applications so why we want to use industrial iot is one of the important application uh, that is to improve the safety in the manufacturing plant in the industrial uh, uh, different other type of plants so resource optimization and waste reduction is also very important uh, this is a very important problem uh, that is the resource optimization okay so uh, that has to be taken care of so of waste reduction as well as uh, uh, end to end automation so this is very important and uh, is very important requirement in the manufacturing industry and has to be taken care of so in the second application of industrial iot uh, is in the uh, healthcare sector so uh, as you know using uh, industrial iot solutions patients can be continuously monitored uh, due to the implanted on body sensors which can improve the treatment uh, outcome or overall cost of treatment can be reduced uh, improved disease uh, detection can be done and improved accuracy from the data uh, that is uh, uh, that is the that are collected uh, that can be achieved and overall the drugs uh, that are administered on the patients and the overall inventory so the control of drugs the procurement control storage and uh, 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 and of the drugs they they can be improved with the help of these industrial iot so industrial iot solutions are very attractive in healthcare sector and also in the transport transportation and logistic sector as well so in order to improve transportation safety efficiency of transportation intelligent transportation system that can be developed which consists of connected vehicles so one of the key uh, building blocks for transportation uh, industrial iot applied to transportation in the concept of uh, uh, intelligent transportation system or connected vehicles 
so intelligent transportation systems come in different forms we have the concept of uh, uh, in its we have the concept of vehicle to sensor connectivity vehicle to vehicle connectivity vehicle to internet connectivity and vehicle to road infrastructure connectivity so there are different type of connectivities that are required uh, uh, in its uh, there is a short range communication uh, in the form of dsrc okay uh, that enables the realization of vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to road infrastructure communication v2v uh then we have v2r sometime it is also known as v2i so v2i uh, is vehicle to infrastructure communication so dsrc is uh, a very important key enabling technology uh, for achieving the objective of uh, v2v and uh, v2r uh, infrastructure communication in industrial iot scenario the physical objects are provided with barcodes or maybe the rfid tags so that real time monitoring of the uh, status and location of the physical objects maybe trucks where they are uh, they are uh, they are uh, what you know uh, what is the condition of the different goods that are carried in the trucks so all of these things can be monitored in real time from the origin uh, from the origin itself irrespective of where the trucks uh, are uh, uh, going or moving and and uh, uh, the entire supply chain can be monitored with industrial iot solutions entire uh, supply chain the status of the good uh, the status of the vehicle so everything can be monitored so security and privacy of the data should also be maintained and that is uh, quite obvious so there is no need to elaborate further uh, so in the mining industry very important uh, uh, industrial uh, uh, iot solutions are very important in the mining industry it is uh, uh, very common to have different type of accidents in the mines so rfid based solutions uh, uh, wifi and different other sensors and other wireless technologies like zigbee bluetooth extra etc can be deployed to collect data to provide early warnings before any disaster actually strikes so it can be used in the mines to improve uh, to monitor uh, uh, but, uh, to monitor like uh, the air quality what is the air quality etc so this is very important problem in the mining sector so monitoring the air quality inside the mine uh, detecting the presence of uh, different type of poisonous gases like uh, uh sulfur oxides or nitrogen oxides gases so different other poisonous gases like carbon monoxide and uh, so also inside the mine which is a very common problem so how much is the oxygen level inside the mine so all of these thing can be monitored inside the mines using this industrial iot solutions so firefight fighting is another uh, rfid tags that can be fitted to these uh, different devices for fire fighting for automatic uh, diagnosis uh, early warning in the uh, fire fighting in the fire infrastructure infrastructure that are deployed typically in the buildings uh, different rfid tags different sensors can be fitted to these uh, fire det detection devices and in the case of emergency rescue and providing real time monitoring so all these will improve the overall security and safety of public infrastructure so some of the examples of uh, industrial iot include uh, use of unmanned aerial vehicles or the drones to inspect oil pipelines monitoring food safety using sensors minimizing work workers exposure to uh, you can say uh, noise chemicals has rds materials and so on so unmanned marine vehicles can be deployed to collect data annually or throughout the year or throughout the months and so on without any fuel or crew so what we have are connected ecosystem uh, in the industrial iot domain so so 
uh, what we have is we have traditional supply chains and these traditional supply chains in these industries are linear typically linear in nature so it is required to shift the business focus from products to outcomes and for that these digital ecosystems can come uh, industrial iot based uh, digital ecosystem can come to rescue so digital ecosystems progress uh, at much faster rate than the physical industries and so it can quickly adapt uh, to the changes in the external environments so it is required to integrate uh, digital technologies with the human workforce so industrial iot can be exclusively m to m so uh, we have to remember we have uh, uh we have humans in the loop so humans will work with machine and the overall outcome will be improved uh the productivity of the system so industrial iot will perform uh, reform uh, and redefine the skills of the workers new jobs can be created with the help of industrial iot uh it is not that uh, uh you know typically people think that uh, automation or industrial iot based solution will cut down on the number of jobs but that is not true so new jobs get created because uh, new technologies get introduced so things like uh, new composite industry uh, precision uh, agriculture or digital healthcare digital mines these require skilled manpower and these skilled manpower is uh what is required so uh, this automation through industrial iot is in uh, turn going to create new jobs with requiring new skill sets okay so this basically uh, will not cut down uh, on the required number of jobs in the industry but also it will create some new jobs so robots have traditionally been used in the industry and uh, industrial iot robots are a very important component so uh in a new form in a new way robots can be used and these robots can sense they can think they can act they can perform different tasks so they will be formed with the ability to carry out repetitive tasks robots uh will be more intelligent they are more intelligent uh they work under the supervision of uh, they can also work under the supervision of human beings their availability uh Uh, increases and they can program reprogrammed and so on so to perform new tasks and the way they can learn faster so robots in a reform manner can be used in the industrial iot to perform the industrial processes in a much more efficient manner in a much more faster way so decision can be made and so on so overall improving the industrial processes uh industrial efficiency and industrial safety and so on so some of the challenges of industrial iot uh, building industrial iot uh, are listed over here so identification of objects or things uh, is important and we already looked at the identification of these things so how do you associate identifiers to these things we have already looked into these in the context of uh, uh regular iot as the same applies here as well so uh, managing huge amount of data is another challenge to be worked on in order to address the problems of industrial iot in order to deploy industrial iot solutions uh, integrating existing infrastructure into new industrial iot infrastructure and enabling data storage so these are some of the challenges behind this industrial iot so there are safety challenges as well as uh, we have discussed earlier so uh, safety is very important it is a fundamental problem in the industry and in the industrial sector safety is very crucial so uh, whether we are talking about the healthcare industry because uh, in the healthcare industry as well in the hospitals uh, and healthcare workers they are exposed to exposed to lot of problems they are exposed to lot of challenges which can harm their health and so on so the same thing uh, for we we are talking about uh, 
mining industry if we are talking about the transportation industry so if we are talking about the steel industry and different other industries there are a lot of safety challenges that are there so uh, workers health and safety are of the primary concern in the industry so worker health and safety regulatory uh, complaints there uh, uh, there are different uh, uh, regulatory bodies in a requiring uh, uh <clears throat> complaints of the machines uh, the people their processes in the industry and so on so these are regulatory compliance with respect to safety particularly that is very crucial so environmental protection is uh, very important as industry and environment they often do not go uh, hand in hand so a lot of challenges exist and a lot of challenges are uh, posed by the industries on the environment in which they uh, they work than optimized operations so these are some of these challenges particularly concerning safety in industrial uh, sector and safety that have to be taken care of through industrial iot solution so there are different hazards as well uh, handling of different hazardous substances storing of the hazardous substances and so on oxygen deficiency uh, particulate matters so particulate matters like uh, uh, fly ash and so on and then radiation a different type of radiation electromagnetic radiation and so on and the psychological stress so all these are different type of hazards then you have to be taken into consideration for offering uh, challenges through the use of industrial iot so standardization is very important in the development of any system so in the context of industrial iot what is required is to improve the interoperability of the system or uh, different system applications and allowing the products and services to perform better so in terms of standardization the problem related to uh, the standardization include interoperability uh, that is uh, semantic interoperability so there is a difference so in semantic interoperability basically one is focusing on data semantics so the meaning uh, uh, as you may be aware about the term interoperability in terms of uh, semantics is what uh, semantic interoperability specifically uh, takes care uh, uh, security and privacy and radio access level issues okay so there are different privacy and security issues as well uh, uh, the two most important concerns needed with industrial iot are information security and data privacy protection uh, of the devices and the things can be tracked and monitored and connected so there are chances of attack as it happens in any other type of networks as well so this industrial iot is also a network it is a huge network where different machines or you can say crucial machines uh, there are different systems humans everybody is connected so these are prone to different attacks there could be different vulnerabilities in these networks so consequently uh, uh, so these have to be taken care of the security issues that have to be taken care of and privacy is very crucial because of the uh, from the industry there are different data uh, the sensors that are collecting the data so it is become it becomes very crucial so the privacy of these data have to be taken care of so information security uh, and data privacy and protection uh, of all these are very crucial issues issues in the context of industrial iot Uh, building of industrial iot so for example uh, in the healthcare industry the medical data of the patient must not be tampered or altered by any person uh, in the middle uh, in the food industry the deterioration of any food item that is being sent to the company should be kept confidential as it will affect the reputation of the company so these are the uh, some of the things which have to be taken care of so these are uh, very important uh, uh, privacy challenges or security challenges posing the building of industrial iot solutions so through industrial iot 
uh, these uh, uh, IoT provides new opportunities, but uh, few at a factor may uh, cause the hindrance in the path of success. Uh, success. These uh, include the lack of vision and leadership, uh, lack of understanding of values among the uh, uh, management employees, or uh, like costly sensors and inadequate infrastructure. So these are some of the risks that are uh, faced by people who want to uh, the management who want to deploy industrial IoT in the industry. So other challenges include improvement at the sensor miniaturization or uh, miniaturization of the sensors that is very crucial. So we're talking about uh, day by day, we are talking about very small scale or small size sensors that can perform as good as, uh, if not better than these existing big size sensors. So miniaturization of the sensor is very important nowadays. We are talking about uh, namespace sensors, which make the uh, sensor, the sh shape of the size of the sensor, uh, very small and these seniors can perform very well as well. Uh, even if they are small in size. So they can perform very well. And uh, uh, overall, uh, through the miniaturization process, the overall cost and the energy consumption uh, can be brought down. And the uh, energy consumption can also be addressed, uh, can be improved because a small size sensor is likely to uh, consume less energy compared to bigger size sensors. So the other challenges with respect to manufacturing. So we're talking about manufacturing. Uh, typically, these are software-based, uh, computer-based. So these are used to improve the overall operational efficiency. So predictive maintenance, savings on scheduled repairs, reduced maintenance, cost maintenance, uh, and reduced number of breakdowns are important challenges as well. And important issues that have to be taken into consideration while trying to introduce industrial IoT in the manufacturing industry. So there was an industry, the IT tech software. So this basically particularizes uh, in software, which improves the industrial facilities efficiency and improves the overall industrial productivity. So energy management solution, which leads to reduction in the plants highest variable cost was it produced uh, that was designed and this particular company automates uh, the process of mapping and managing energy consumption. So the products that they de develop include M2M based communication uh, and intelligent radio modems. Uh, these are some of these products and their specifications given over here. And these devices provide easy maintenance and installation. They can be connected to IP or non IP devices to extend the capability to monitor and communicate with other technologies. So this is a solution that they developed a uh, product uh, uh, that they developed is known as control, which offers IO link to the master gateway. Uh, so it can be easily integrated into the industrial network with existing and new installation. So it supports Ethernet and IP and also supports the Modbus TCP. So there are different benefits of industrial IoT, improving the connectivity among devices, improving efficiency, updating the scalability. So easily one can scale up uh, by the use uh, uh, scale up in the industrial sector, industrial processes that can be scaled up. So industrial, uh, uh, the overall industrial productivity, productivity can be scaled up through the use of industrial IoT. Reduction in the operation time that can be achieved in the industry through the use of industrial IoT solutions. Uh, remote diagnosis can be performed quite efficiently with the help of industrial IoT and uh, industrial IoT solutions offers cost effective solutions also. So in terms of uh, research, uh, recent research trends, one is to improve the communication among the different things or 
objects to second is to develop uh, energy efficient uh, uh, techniques so as to reduce power consumption by the sensor third is to develop uh, context uh, aware internet of things uh, middleware for better understanding of the sensor data uh, and the fourth is to create smart objects with uh, larger memory uh, processing and reasoning capabilities so so these are some of the different features uh, the different applications of industrial iot and how industrial iot can improve the productivity in the industry in the different plants uh, manufacturing plants on the healthcare sector and so on so industrial iot systems uh, that they have a requirement for very small sized uh, less expensive sensors which are easily accessible and so this basically will help in the uh, furthering the use of industrial iot more in the industry then the second thing is the assembly line so controlling the assembly line automates uh, monitoring control and maintenance of the industrial processes and the industrial product lines these can be achieved uh, efficiently with the help of industrial iot so this is uh, all about this industrial iot so i hope you get an idea about how uh, the work is going on in the field of industrial iot and how we can uh, uh, we can uh, get into it and we can find a solution of a problem uh, to work in the field of this industrial iot i hope you get an overview uh, to uh, uh, get a smart solution for the industrial sector as well using this uh, internet of things so thank you very much so if there is any uh, query so you can ask if you have any query later on so uh, also you can ask uh, later on so you can just mail me or you can just message me so uh, i will try to uh, answer your query if possible to me so thank you very much uh, there is one more announcement i will share the google link for today's uh, feedback and attendance so you just all have to Uh, fill that form and uh, uh, i will share that through mail or as well as on whatsapp group so just have to uh, fill that form and uh, tomorrow is the last day of our uh, fdp so there will be some a small uh, uh, assessment test uh, that will be uh, there tomorrow so you all have to perform in the test as the condition is that you have to uh, attain the 60% score in the assessment test then only you will get the participation certificate so kindly uh, be prepared and i hope you get an idea and uh, you will uh, go uh, through that test and you will definitely clear that so but i just want to inform you that uh, it is compulsory to all of you if you do not attend the test then definitely you will not gonna uh, uh, get the certification uh by uh, of this fdp so you just have to attend the test and you have to clear the test with minimum 60% mark that is a criteria set by aict so that is all i just want to uh, uh, mention you so uh, thank you very much uh thank you very much have a nice day bye bye